Hi there and welcome to another YouTube channel video. Um, a little bit different, I'm stood in front of the camera, um, not my usual place, I'm normally hidden behind it, but I just thought I would show you something very, very different to what I've shown you before. And I just came into my office this morning to do some work on the computer and spotted these lovely tulips um, were looking absolutely gorgeous. The light's really very soft outside this morning, so there weren't too many harsh shadows. And I just noticed how much the colours were popping against the lovely green background that I've got. So um, I thought I'd have a play. And I've been following the work of Eric Marm um, for a long time, and I love the sort of ethereal feel he gives to images. Um, what he does is he holds the camera still for a little while within his multi, um, within his ICM. It's not a multiple exposure, it's an ICM. And what he does is holds it still for a little while and then moves it for some of the image as well. Now it's a complete uh, sort of play experimentation to find what works, whether you stop for longer, move for longer, that kind of thing. Um, and it's there's no hard and fast rules for me to give you um, other than to say experiment and play and kind of learn um, what the result that you want to get is, you know, it's, it's, I like taking inspiration from people, but I hate copying people. Um, and certainly I haven't seen Eric making any photos of tulips, so I don't think I'm treading on any toes there. Um, but what I wanted to do was I just wanted to get in front of the um, camera and just show you maybe a little bit of the movements that I'm doing. Um, again, this is all quite new to me, trying to video myself doing anything, so we shall see how it goes. Um, but what I was doing was I was just playing and I've got loads and loads of super photos, but they are very, very different depending on what I was trying to actually achieve. So what you're going to see is me having a little play. And so I've tried to do um, some sharp photos. I've also tried to do some sort of quite ICM-y photos while I move the camera the whole time while I'm making the photo. And then, um, and then I've started playing. So um, I've set different lengths of exposure. I've been up to sort of 10 seconds even. I've been working also on um, delayed shutter release sometimes. Um, and sometimes what I've been doing is I've just moved the camera maybe four times. And so you move the tulip four times within a um, uh, one um, exposure. So again, you can play to your heart's content and you will see from the selection of images I've got that I have played to my heart's content. I came in here to do like um, work <laughs> and came in and I ended up playing. So also just to show you that you do not need to be out in an amazing place to go and practice your ICM skills because you can definitely practice them um, at home with a bunch of tulips in uh, a bun in a vase. Um, I just happen to have a lovely background here that I can work with. So, um, and it's very nice here with the light. But anyway, I am going to now try and walk you through some of the movements, if I can do that. Right, I've now got my setup here. I'm going to attempt to try and show you this. Um, I'm hoping you can see on the back of the camera and you can see what I'm photographing and that you're also going to be able to see the camera movements as well. So um, I picked, first of all, one tulip head that we're just going to have a play with to start with. And I just want to run you through um, a couple of different options on how to think about playing. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a ICM of this one. I'm just going to create a soft image of this flower. Now I was just working on 10 seconds a minute, a second ago, so I'm just going to drop this a um, little bit higher. Uh, going to go take it to two seconds. Now I am one who really, I, what I do is I would keep the ISO the same. I've got it set at 160 here today. Um, I set my shutter speed at something around what I think I want it to be. And then I play with the aperture. Now, I don't think, I say to a lot of people, between about f2 and f8, you really don't see that much difference in your um, the effect of depth of field in ICM. Between f8 and f16, you don't see that much difference. Between f16 and f32, for example, you don't see that much difference. However, you will see a big difference when it is between f32 and f2. OK, so you will see a difference, but they're very small, depending on how far you're moving in your depth of field, which is why I don't mind. I don't keep depth of field as an important element. So today I'm going to use it to balance the exposure. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to ICM this tulip. So I've got it set two seconds, F8, ISO 160. Um, I've got it's fairly dull today, but I have got light wind um, light coming from two windows behind me. So this is all completely natural light. So I'm going to loosen my ball head tripod and I'm just going to for the two seconds, I am just going to move my camera. Now you'll see they're not massive movements. OK, but what you've got 
is a very sort of blurry shot of a tulip. It's okay, it's ICM. Um, you'll see that it's there's edges popped up in there. For me, it's, yeah, it's ICM, but it's not that pleasing. I'd rather do a sharp tulip, to be honest. Um, and a lot of my photography, when I teach, I say to you, you say to people, why do you actually want to create the ICM image you want to make? Why are you using ICM? So in this case, I'd be like, I don't know why am I using ICM, because I much prefer the sharp image. Um, so let's have a look at some other options. So now I'm going to try, some people have seen this in the past. I'm just going to make it slightly longer because I just need a tiny little bit more time to play with this. So again, I've dropped the shutter speed down to three seconds. So I've just had to increase the f-stop to keep the exposure similar. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make two defined movements and I'm going to stop between each two. So hopefully what you're going to see is see two elements. So we go one two okay and i'm not really moving my camera properly in between and what you now see instead here is like a doubling effect almost if we can make it bigger we can make this effect bigger by moving the image a little bit stronger one two we obviously need to make sure we've still got the tulip in there but this time you can see there's a much bigger effect you've almost got like a, a sort of a, um what do you call it a reflection or a shadow of the tulip which i quite like it's quite nice again if you want to do that three times you just lengthen the shutter speed and we'll go to say six seconds increase the depth of field i'm just going to pull out a little bit because i need a little bit more movements to move and we're going to move three times so i'm going to just practice one two three and the thing should stay in the in the tulip should stay in the focus area so one two three and i needed to give myself that extra time just to move the camera i actually gave myself too long there but now you'll see you have three tulips which is quite cool <laughs> so i'm hoping you can see that again you're going to see these on the screen shortly so that's if you want to create multiple tulips what if you want to create a strong tulip and a faded tulip for example so this is where the balance between um, how long you stand still or how long you have um, an image, part of your image still versus how long you have your image moving. OK, now I've got six seconds, so that's actually quite a long time. So I'm going to just reduce it again. I'm going to take it about two and a half because I'm just going to try and keep it still for a little bit first. So I'm going to keep still, then I'm going to move. So I'm going to count to one and a half and then I'm going to move one and a half. And it gave me a couple of half a second. So what you end up doing is a sharpish versus soft image. And you've got the two. It kind of looks like a multiple exposure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen the time of the shutter speed. And I'm going to hold my tulip still longer. And I'm actually going to tighten up the um, ball head this time because otherwise it won't stay still. I'm actually going to hold it for like four seconds at least. One, two three, four, and now I'm just going to move it very slightly. And the, what's happened here is the balance between the length of time that you're holding something still and the movement, the, the balance has been shifted. So now what you're finding is that the sharper end element of the image is becoming more dominant than the ICM. If we go the opposite way round, so we say we'll only go for a second and then five seconds movement, one, Two, two seconds, okay, two seconds still, four seconds moving. Okay, what you're going to see is a little bit of a softer image because the image wasn't sharp. Again, if you go literally one second still, one second, and then I'm moving it for five seconds, I'm moving a little bit. You can see I'm not moving the, the camera very much here. Yeah, we've gone very much softer, but there's still just a hint of the sharpness, which you didn't get in the ICM image when you were moving the whole time. So it's all about deciding what you actually want to achieve with your image before you start. Now, I'm just going to show you with the whole set of tulips because they're just so beautiful. Um, I'm on uh, manual focus so I can try and focus this. My eyes are getting worse. So um, I'm just going to let's hold it um uh, let's hold it for yeah let's hold it still for four seconds and then move it so one two three four a little bit of movement we've got a slightly bigger area to be moving over this time because the tulips are covering 
And what you can see in a minute when I show it to you on the screen, you will see that the tulips are quite sharp and there's just the hint of movement. So let's drop it to two seconds. Uh, let's go four seconds. Let me think. Two seconds still and more movement. One, two. So this time we're putting more movement into the image just because we didn't hold it so still for so long. And you'll see that again, there's just the hint of stillness here, but there's a lot of movement. And I just need to play with the exposure here because it's just dropped a little bit dark. This time I'm going to move it for the whole six seconds. So we're going to get a truly ICM image that's got no element of stillness in it at all. Again, I need to make sure I don't move it too far because otherwise I end up taking other elements into it. But you can see again, we'll have a look on the images in a minute. Um, but you can see that this is a really blur. There is no point of sharpness in here because I didn't hold it still um, within there again. Now, just for those of you who might be interested, some um, just there's a pep vento, there's a technique called pep ventosa, and what they do is he takes a number of images, and what he does is he actually moves around the subject. I can't move around the subject, or I'm not going to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take eight different images, and I'm kind of kind of going to go one, two, three, four, drop down one, two, three, four. Um, and each one needs to be held for a tiny sharp set in a second. So you do have to have it sharp. So I'm just going to up the time to about 10 seconds and we so we're just going to stay still for like one second in each each one okay so one two three four drop down one two three four and you have to make sure that you've still got the element that you're photographing in there all the time and i obviously gave myself a little bit too much time because i was sat there at the end but this time what you've got is almost a multiple exposure effect. You've got four sharp images and you can see they go across. So what happens if I go diagonally this time? One, two, three, four, go up, two, three, four. And then I'm just gonna come back to the middle this time. So I've got a kind of sharp element in the middle there. Again, it's just a little bit too long for this shutter speed. Again, we've got like multiple exposure effect. So. What I hope that's just given you is an idea of some things to play with. Um, hopefully it's been a little bit of fun. Ooh, pop the hint between here. Um, hopefully it's a little bit of fun just so you can see um, my thought process and maybe how I play with something when it's absolutely brand new to me. Um, I've never done this before. Um, I took some tulips, uh, bizarrely, although I lived in Hol live in Holland and I photograph tulips all the time. Um, I don't very often do still life stuff in my house. So it's just like I just spotted these this morning and I thought I'd have a bit of fun. So now what I'm going to do is just run you through some of the resulting images. I hope you. OK, so welcome back. I am now over in Lightroom and I've just pulled in all the images. I took about 130 in the hour or so that I was just having a play um, with the tulips. Um, variations but what I've just done is noted what I mentioned to you in the video so I'm just going to run you through those photos first just so you can have a look at them so um, just so you can know the timings and things as well you can see those just up here if you um, if you look up here as well I'm just moving myself down here so I'm not in your way so when we're looking at uh, individual photos you can see up here if you want to have a look this one for example shows it was two seconds ISO 160 um, F8. So you can see the, the settings if you're interested in that kind of thing. So this one, um, first one I made with you was um, completely ICM. And the idea was just to move the camera throughout. So there was a non-definable point within the image. I could have moved it very slightly more, um, but as you can see, the movement wasn't very big when we looked at the video. Um, but what you've ended up is it kind of a smudgy ICM image from this one, which, um, which is okay, but as at, at the time I said, yeah, why would you take this rather than the sharp image? It doesn't bring anything really to me. Um, but anyway, so then we went on to look at two defined movements. Um, I've changed the shutter speed to three seconds and made two defined movements, which were the same time, um, exactly the same time as each other. So we had about one and a half seconds. Um, I moved the camera and then I dropped it down a little bit to create. And you can see like a, a sort of shadowing effect here. The next one we had um, was exactly the same shutter speed, 
but um, this time I made a bigger movement. So you can see now, whereas before these two uh, tulips were sort of sat on top of each other because I made a very small movement, I then attempted to try and separate the tulips by making a bigger movement when I was photographing. Then I decided to do something very similar, but with three definable movements. So I increased the shutter speed to six seconds, which gave me long enough to move my camera to make these. And now you have three defined tulips within the image. Let me just say this. I've done a tiny cropping on some of these, but virtually otherwise, these are all straight out of camera. Then what we did was we moved on to having a play with um, how much blur we put in versus how much movement. So this one was two and a half seconds um still and then we had one and a half seconds um yeah i don't know it's two and a half seconds in total um so it must have been moved for uh, it must have been held still and then moved for let's have a look yeah one two and a half seconds one so one and a half seconds was still and one second was movement so just a little bit more time was spent still than moving on this one this one, however, was four seconds, and um, this time the um, the shutter speed was uh, the shutter was only the shutter was open, and the movement was only for a fraction of the time that the um, photo was being taken. So the time that the image was still was a lot longer. So now you can see you've just got a hint of movement here in the background, but the still element is far stronger in the image. This one here, we had um, two seconds where you held it still and four seconds where we moved it. So again, you can see you've got the same element where you've got a strong element, but this time there's a little bit more softness because there was a little bit more movement that went in on top of the still image. And this one, last one of the series, this one was held for one second still and then five seconds of movement. So you can see these last three here, we're going from sort of uh, four seconds still, one second movement. Around the same, each uh, two seconds, two, two to three seconds movement. And then this one here was um, only one second held and lots and lots of movement. So just to give you a feel of what you can actually see coming out of the camera um, when you make these changes. Then what we did was we moved to the full set of tulips. And this one was four seconds still, and then two seconds moved. So you can see it's almost a sharp image, but then you just get this hint of this movement in the background that happened in the two seconds that I had a play with it. Um, again, straight out of camera, so I've not really done anything to it. Uh, so there's plenty of to, to go at, but I quite like it that there's just a hint of something in there and maybe you can't figure out what it was. Uh, the next one here was two seconds still and four seconds movement. So again, we brought in more movement versus the still. So it becomes a little bit of a softer image. Now, this is where you need to be really careful. If you zoom out, you start getting, I've got the bottom of the table in here, which is really not very nice. So you need to really be very aware of what you're bringing into the image when you start moving the camera around. Um, the next one here was um, an ICM, but for six seconds. So I moved the camera continuously for six seconds. Very small movements, and they tended to be rather than fluid movements. They did tend to be juddery movements, but rather than holding it still in one place for any length of time, I just kind of moved the camera uh, sort of randomly, no particular direction. So you can see it's a very soft, very non-definable ICM. You can see there is some slight, you can see there's a repetition of some of these flowers, but in general, it's quite a soft image. Then what I did was I introduced you to the idea of Pet Ventosa. Um, do go and have a look them up if you're intrigued. And what I did here was I did eight movements. I did four across and then I dropped down and I bounced four back. And then the last one was just held a little bit stiller because I had a bit more time. So what you can see now is that you have a little bit more defined elements because I actually held each one rather than doing a continuous movement. Um, and I did eight. So you get eight different tulips in there which is quite, quite cool. It's a bit of a fun thing to do. And the last one, what I did was rather than move um, horizontally across and then drop down like in a box, I thought it'd be fun to move diagonally. So I did exactly the same thing, but I moved four times diagonally and then went up and then I moved four times diagonally back in the other way. So again, there's eight, there's essentially eight images and I had to move the shutter speed up to 10 seconds for that one. 
So those are kind of all straight out of camera images of what we just saw in the video, which I thought it was fun to show you. Um, but then what I did want to do was I just wanted to show you some other ones that I have played with that I took before we joined each other on the video. And these have been very slightly edited so that you can enjoy um, these that I've played with. This one, I held it still and then um, I held it still on a one tulip and then actually moved up and I did the blur over the full set of tulips, which is why you've got the purple and the yellow coming back in the background. So um, this tulip was separate from the other ones in the bars um hanging out so which is why i've managed to get some different colors in there um this one i really quite like it's kind of got a really ethereal very soft feeling again i held it for a fairly uh for a few seconds and then i moved it just very very slightly sort of up and round and then what you've got is this stronger element of stillness but this lovely soft feeling over the top of it of a little bit of movement this one very similar but i held it longer for um, the stillness so you've got less movement going on this one here was completely multiple exposure um so not multiple exposure completely icm and i was just moving the camera around all the time and i quite like this it's um yeah it's 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 busy but it's it's quite energetic this one i moved the camera in a different way i moved the camera upwards rather than left and right and you can see that the sort of repeating elements have gone up and i quite like this one because it's picked up the textures a little bit more of the grasses and it kind of gives a feeling a bit more, I think, of soft tulips. So I quite like that one. Again, something very similar, just a little bit movement. Not quite so keen on that, but I just wanted to show you. Um, this one, again, was a sharpish one with a little bit of movement, just to add a little bit of softness in there. This one's a complete ICM movement. So just lots and lots of little uh, shifts, very small. Um, but again, I quite like the pastel effect that it's given on this one. This one had bigger movements, again, ICM, and you can see how there is nothing defined in here at all. Um, I've kind of lost the tops of the tulips out of the frame. Um, it kind of looks as though the tulip has been whipped in a, a wind frenzy. Um, this would make a great background if you're going to do uh, multiple exposures, something like that. So just intriguing to see that one. Um, this one was actually, uh, I just moved the camera twice. Um, and you can see there's just a doubling of everything that's moved upwards. And I move the camera upwards. So everything's jumped upwards. Again, intriguing, interesting effect. Whether I choose it over any of the others, I'm not sure. But again, it's nice to see what can be created. This one I moved left and right to, um, to get this. So it's kind of almost a swaying of the flowers left and right. Um, I quite like this one because it fills the whole frame with a bit of energy. Again, I've lost the little ones off the top there, which isn't great, but I like the, the fact that it's kind of got this round shape in this one. Um, again, just playing around with movements and time. Again, I quite like this one because it feels like a multiple exposure and it feels quite energetic, um, but also there's a really some really crisp detail in there as well. And then this was one I started right at the beginning. Um, I held it for, let's just have a look. What have I got? This is actually 13 seconds, this one here. Um, and so I must have held it for like 10 seconds still on the tripod. And then I just unclipped the tripod and then just moved it for the last three seconds. And you just get this hint of color in the background and the fact that the tulip is not absolutely pin sharp. And I really quite like this. I thought this was quite nice. So, um, is that the last one? I think that might be the last one. No, it's not. This was completely multiple exposure. Um, sorry, <laughs> completely ICM. Moved it all the time. Deliberately didn't want to get any um, defined objects. It's all about color and texture. This one, again, a great one that if you wanted to do multiple exposure, you could put this and use this as a color element in the background. This one here, again, a bit like the one two before. Um, I just literally, um, this one again is 13 seconds, so I held it probably for 10 seconds still and then moved it very, very slightly just to give this hint of colour in the background. These couple here, this one and this one, and possibly this one, no, not that one. So this one and this one, I've shown you because <laughs> I don't think they work very well. Um, it looks like the tulips sort of 
shooting off into the stars or something like that. It doesn't give a very pretty feeling to the tulip, to be honest. I, it looks more like a triffid, something that's coming out to bite you. Um, but this is just moving the camera to the right and shifting it during the, the image. Um, I don't think it works great, but I just thought I'd show you it um, because I get disasters as well as ones that work. This one I quite liked. Um, I've just played with this a little bit to crop it and make it simplified. Um, this one I moved, but I had two seconds. So I was actually moving the camera really quickly. I kind of just went, doo, doo, doo. Um, not, I didn't hold it still for very long, but I did make specific defined movements, which is why you can see uh, there's actually four elements, I think, in here, four movements. And then um, all the flower heads have kind of come on top of each other which I quite like that because it's just given a real softness. It almost looks like um, an X-ray. And then this one is my last one to show you. Um, again, I just thought this was, again, a little bit different. I've cropped it square because I think it's a little bit more graphic than some of the other images. Again, when I'm cropping, playing, editing, I try and figure out what the, the image is actually asking for. And when it's just playing for myself and nobody else, I don't mind if I crop differently. Um, edit differently, that kind of thing. For the purposes of this, it's it's been a bit of a fun playing exercise. So I hope you've enjoyed that uh, little walkthrough to go with the videos that I made. This is maybe a little bit of a longer YouTube video than normal. Um, but again, something very, very different than I've shared with you before and something I've kind of learned on the hoof with you this morning while I was making the videos. So again, if you have any questions, do pop them in the, um, in the area below here. Um, and I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you on another YouTube video soon. Thanks a lot for joining me.